Hello everybody, Toreno here, and today we're going to take a look at the announcement regarding flares and repair kits being changed for War Thunder. So basically what is happening is that flares for aircraft can now be used from stock. So at the moment you need to, or previously you would have had to research countermeasures from scratch. You didn't have any available from the start. What is happening now is that you get some basic flares straight away. So obviously this improves survivability against enemies with missiles and such. Of course you still need to research the flares chaff modification if you want additional options like the chaff only, flares reinforced or flare priority. And we're also told that additional countermeasure kits such as the bowl type systems, additional containers with chaff or additional countermeasure kits for the Mirage 2000 and Kurnas 2000 will still require separate modifications to be researched. Now I don't have those two planes unlocked so that's not going to particularly affect me but it seems like a really good change for the upper tier jet aircraft especially once you start getting lots of missiles involved. It does help to somewhat even the playing field against players with fully spaded vehicles or you know just players with missiles in general and it does give you a bit of a fighting chance. Now the one that's going to affect me more is the changes to repair kits and the fire extinguisher. So under the previous model, if you got set on fire on a stock vehicle, you couldn't put out the fire. You could press six and if a player came up to help you, they could assist in putting out the fire. But of course, that was very um, haphazard because if you're being shot at, then obviously friendlies are not necessarily going to be ecstatic about throwing themselves into danger to put out the fire of a teammate with a stock vehicle. And so generally what would happen is the fire would just burn through until you were destroyed and of course you couldn't repair yourself or you could only do very basic repairs on cap points possibly if teammates helped you but that's not an experience I've had to go through for a long time but what's changed now is that you now get for a stock vehicle a single use of the fire extinguisher so without unlocking the FPE modification you can put out one fire if you do unlock the FPE modification, you get your two extinguishers like you get at the moment or used to get when you unlocked it. And more importantly, in my opinion, is the changes to the repair kit. So basically, you will now be able to do basic repairs whenever. Basically, they're called field repairs in the announcement. And this will bring all your modules up to partial functionality. So they're not going to be working at 100%. And again, this was sort of possible in the old system if you went to a cap point I believe but obviously they've made it so you can now do it whenever you are. Now like I say it's only going to be partially functional but they have changed what that functionality is going to be so gun spread multiplier has been changed from 15 to 5, guidance angles have been changed from 3 to 6 degrees, transmission losses have been changed from 50% to 25% and engine power reduction has been changed from 60% to 40%. So basically, even though you can't repair to 100%, you're not going to be as worse off as you were under the old system with regards to basic repairs. So like with the engine power, you only lose 40% of your power instead of 60%. So even though you've only got partial functionality, you're still going to be doing a lot better than you were under the old system. I mean, under the old system, 99% of the time, you just wouldn't be able to repair your damage. And that made some stock vehicles very hard to rank up. And of course, with this change, it does provide some unique opportunities with regards to research and modifications. So for example, with some vehicles, maybe the stock shells are absolutely useless, but under the old system, you'd have to go repair kit first and then the fire extinguisher because otherwise you were just kind of screwed when going into battle. Under this new system, maybe you can skip the fire extinguisher, just get the parts and then go for the new shell, or maybe skip both of them, go for what can be considered more useful modifications because now you won't be as disadvantaged by not having those modifications. Naval has also had a similar change but it's not called field repair there it's called battle for survivability. So basically you'll be able to do repairs, firefighting and pumping out the water from a stock vehicle. Now it does say that the crew are going to be a lot slower at doing this because they're not an experienced trained crew but there won't be any limits on the new firefighting system so this is a very good change for naval as well because again they have a similar thing with the fire extinguishers and repair so obviously this will help with the naval side of things as well 
Because again, much like with the ground forces, you might prefer to go for a better shell, especially with battleships and cruisers, for example, you just start off with high explosive, which um, is not always the best thing against armored targets. So yeah, this is definitely a very welcome change to the ground forces and naval forces. And just to confirm, there's no need to upgrade these. Again, players who have already researched any modifications for the ground and naval side of things will still have them unlocked. Uh, there's also been some minor changes to air maps. Basically, they've made it so smaller maps are available for lower battle rating ranges and larger maps are available for those at higher battle ratings. Um, this isn't something I've ever particularly noticed. I don't think I've ever had issues with the maps. But a whole bunch of them have been uh, changed or removed. So Air Battle France 1944, Operation Husky, and the last battle for Kalkin Gull have been removed from rotation. Middle East, Ho Chi Minh, China, and Battle for Vietnam are only available up to battle rating 2.0. Lysale Bay and Battle of Spain only available from 2.3 to 5.0. Kursk 2.3 to 6.7. And Pyrenees, Bourbon Island, Malta, Halalu. Attack on Wake Island and Midway are only available at battle ratings 4.0 and onwards, while Battle at Malta is available from 5.7. Again, this isn't something I've ever particularly had an issue with, but maybe those of you who play aircraft more will find this a really good change. And it does say to update your filters to, you know, reflect the changes that have been made. But um, yeah, so that one's probably a good change, but again, that's not really going to affect me. So yeah, that's another of the new changes brought in. And you can see we've already had a bunch brought in already. And we've got a bunch more that are ready to be brought in. So condensing tech trees, improving the balance of vehicles around the era breaking battle ratings, which has always been a massive issue for me. Like just the change from the World War II to Cold War vehicles has always been a bit of an issue. Could be improvements to premium accounts, locations and missions, gameplay. I'm just going to scrub. I'm just going to scroll through these very slowly and just so you can read them. But basically, yeah, this is a very good bunch of changes. Um, like I say, the aircraft ones aren't going to affect me too much, but for the naval and ground forces, this is a really good, you know, change from Gaijin. So I think it's going to make the whole stock experience a lot better. And yeah, this is a really good change for War Thunder. Anyway, just a quick video for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll join me for future videos like this. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.